Yo, what is up guys? It's Eric from The Surf NJ and I'm going to try to leave this intro as short as humanly possible because there's there's a lot to get in. I had a fun day. Once a season, every year, I like to try to get out on one of the New Jersey party boats because I like to mix it up a little bit, you know, experience something new, kind of scratch that party boat itch, get out there in deeper water and try to catch some species of fish that I don't normally get to catch because we're in deeper water and not from the surf. This year, finally, finally got a chance to go on the big Jamaica out of Brielle. And it was a, listen, it was one of the most fun days of fishing that I've had in a long time because usually I'm on those rocks. I'm on those jacks and hundreds of times I've watched that boat go by me, but this time it was real interesting to get the boat's angle and head out of the inlet. I'd never done it before. And then we kept going and, and, and then uh, we kept going and then I lost cell service and sight of any coastline whatsoever. So, I mean, we were, we were out there, but the captain and crew got us right on fish. It didn't matter if you were top fishing, bottom fishing. It, it was an absolutely unbelievable day. I wish I kept more fish. I wish I brought a bigger cooler. That's a five straight hours of nonstop fishing. So I don't want to ramble on and on. I want to show you the footage. These are the highlights, including some underwater footage, and including after that, a little taste test of a couple species of fish that I had never caught before in my life. See you in about 15. All right, here we go. And I am going to do some light commentary over top of this video because those of you who subscribe to this channel or have watched my videos before know that I, um, how do I put this? I, I have a unique way of expressing myself while fishing. And uh, this is on a party boat. I'm by myself. It's a busy Saturday. So I'm, uh, you never go full Eric in front of strangers. So I will do some commentary. I, I thought it was kind of cool on, on this trip, on this particular boat, that the uh, the captain there, I don't know if this happens on every other party boat, but the captain was was really active on the microphone, communicating to you what he saw on his radar as far as where the fish were, how to fish for them, how deep they were, and so that was super helpful in catching fish. for two, dude. I should have brought a bigger cooler. This is the way it's gonna be. Oh man, I didn't. Okay. All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Thank you. 
Nigga, you see them down there? Oh, yeah. You see them, can you? Yeah. They're all over the place. Mm -hmm. And these are uh, Atlantic mackerel. I know there's also Spanish mackerel around this time of year. I've also seen uh, on their Instagram page some cobia caught, but everything you're gonna see here until I switch over to bottom fishing is gonna be Atlantic mackerel. By the time I let it sink, mm -hmm. I'll close the bale mm -hmm. and it's on. Yep. Gosh, ready? Close the bale. Oh, no, I'm full of shit. I did was close the bale. happy to help out a fellow fisherman and it ended up working out for him if you haven't noticed my strategy here is to kind of cast out uh, a little further from everybody else you got one yeah. that way i'm away from everyone else's lines listen it's a it's a busy saturday it's a busy party boat and yeah. tangles are inevitably gonna happen magic jig but if you cast it out a little further and did that snap jigging at least right in front of it you know snapping it with everyone else's line, and it helped prevent tangles. Yep, me too, me too, me too. You can see like right when you're in the thick of them. Yep. Like right there. See it, they're right there. Oh, I don't 
again. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. All right, this doesn't happen often, but when it does, it never disappoints. I had the opportunity to strap on the Go Fish Cam because the water was so clear and we could see so much, and then the fish weren't literally jumping on the line. Uh, there was some really cool footage of watching these fish go after it. This is a high-low rig with a green four-inch gold grub. Uh, nothing fancy, just moving it up and down, and when these fish are feeding, even the slightest movement will, uh, it will, will grab one of their attention and they will bite it. This was a really cool one because I decided to drop down a little deeper. And at times, it felt like it was shooting fish in a barrel down here. But once you drop down a little deeper, you realize there are literally hundreds of these things swimming around. And this clip here, uh, it, it kind of spoke to why maybe the jig was working better than just dropping down with bait. Uh, and, and listen, I'm no expert in this by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just going by literally what I saw on camera. Uh, this was a piece of mackerel. I just took the green gulp grub off and replaced it with a piece of mackerel. And for whatever reason, for as many times as this is getting hit, uh, it's just, for whatever reason, the hook's not setting. Again, I'm not saying one way is better than the other. I'm just going by literally what I'm seeing on camera. So after I had my fill of the mackerel and my arms were kind of burning there, I decided to uh, switch it up and do a little bit of bottom fishing. Nothing fancy going on here. This is just your old tried and true uh, high-low rig, four-inch gulp grub at the bottom. It's either a four or five-inch copper penny shrimp at the top. We're going to sink it down to the bottom and see if there isn't some sea bass down there. And there's nothing fancy going on here. This is the old tried and true technique. You just uh, let that sinker go all the way to the bottom until you get that thud. Uh, then start bouncing it up and down once you feel contact with the bottom. A lot of times, boom, right away you'll get a strike uh, in the event that they shape off like they do here. Right near the quarterback. You can uh, just drop it right back down to the bottom and uh, make contact. Start jigging again and go right back at it. What is that? What is that? What is that? Not on this video, and, and unfortunately, uh, GoPro malfunction did not have it recording. Doing this, I also did catch a, uh, a ling which are out there. Uh, 
arms burning. Sick <laughs> bass. Spike heavy from 20 feet to 70 feet right now. Double whammy. God damn. Come on. Get up here. Get up here. Oh my god, I got a mackerel and a sea bass? Oh my god. I got the sea bass down low, mackerel hit it up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Chill. God damn it. Yeah, and that, uh, that, that happened more than a few times where you'd uh, drop down low, catch a sea bass, and on the fight on the way up, on that green grub there, you'd, uh, you'd catch yourself a mackerel too for the old... Uh, McDouble. Something. Oh, no Think so, little link. Yep, look at the car. Give me another ding a ling. Ooh. 
Is it gonna give me the pull? Maybe. Right, guys so i hope you enjoyed that video it was certainly an enjoyable time aboard the big jamaica at abriel which certainly want to recommend it but being as i caught two new fish that i've never caught before i just wanted to give it a little taste test on camera to get like an initial first reaction and i cook these fish pretty much the same way i cook every single one of my fish when I catch them. And that is a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of butter, a little bit of lemon. I don't go nuts, don't go crazy. I just like to taste the fish. So we're gonna try these the same way I cook every single fish that I catch. First, the sea bass. White, flaky, you gotta love it. I mean, it's delicious. Everybody loves sea bass. There's nothing not to like. All right, next up we got the, uh, the, the ling. It wasn't a big fish. Uh, I'm lucky that I got any meat out of it whatsoever because, uh, listen, I totally like Edward Scissor hand this thing. It was incredibly slimy and slippery and try to imagine filleting a water balloon covered in snot, but we're going to give it a try. Hmm. Okay. All right. white it's flaky it's actually really good this is a really good fish and lastly there's the mackerel um i have my reservations about this one i asked one of the mates on the big jamaica when i was catching them if anybody eats these things and he asked me if i had a smoker and said that a lot of people like to smoke it which is not an answer you want to hear. Because honestly, I could smoke an old steel-toed boot. And, you know, it would be tough, but it would have that nice smoky flavor. It's all right. Here, here, here goes nothing. <laughs> hmm. It's fishy. It's um, definitely like the other ones. You could give to somebody who doesn't necessarily like fish and they would tolerate it. This is, this is, you have to, you gotta like the taste of fish to like this. That's a little bit of a tuna steak flavor to it. I would say if you enjoy eating bluefish, which of course in and of itself is an oily, fishy fish. And some, for some it's an acquired taste. Um, or you like tuna. Yeah, you get down with this. You get down with this. Mm. Excuse me. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed being aboard the Big Jamaica. All the crew was so nice. The, the, the captain put us on fish. We were out there. You could, you could bottom fish. You could top fish. It was an enjoyable time. I certainly don't regret it. And of course, would recommend it to you because you know how much of an importance I put on supporting local New Jersey business. So please, if you want to take a day to go out on one of these party boats, one of these charter boats, check out the Big Jamaica. And I thank you for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe. Give it that old thumbs up button. And until next time, tight lines. And I'll see you on the beach.